Hi there! So a good friend of mine recently told me that he was not happy with the electrical wiring slash system in his garage. And after having a look at it by myself, I understood what he meant. He basically only has two outlets along with one switch to turn on and off a pretty dark lamp. Combine that with aluminum conductors and you got yourself an electrical system that is around 40 to 50 years old. So in this video I will team up with my friend who is actually a professional electrician with more than 10 years of work experience in order to renew the electrical wiring slash system of his garage. Along the way we will tell you all the juicy theoretical and practical details which are most important when it comes to doing electrical wiring here in Germany. But that does not mean that we encourage you to do your own electrical wiring. You should always hire a professional to do electrical work. Because if something goes wrong, it can end up in a disaster. And with that being said, let's not waste any more time and let's get started. This video is sponsored by JLC PCB. Feel free to visit their website jlcpcb.com to not only find out what awesome PCB and assembly services they offer, but also to easily upload your Gerber files and thus order affordable and high quality PCBs quickly. The first thing we did was pretty much the most boring parts. By drawing a rectangle as a representation of the garage and then positioning the electrical components in there according to our needs. Such a plan is called an installation plan and it is rather important for the planning phase. We decided on 4 lamps, 4 double outlets and one 2 circuit switch in combination with a single outlet. And by the way those symbols are standardized and thus you can easily find them on the internet. Then we also positioned a new distribution box from which we connected wires to smaller junction boxes and from there to our electrical components. Now this plan can look a bit intimidating to people who never did electrical wiring before. But it is actually quite simple. Everything starts in such a distribution box. In it you will always find some kind of circuit breaker. In our case we used an RCBO which stands for residual current breaker with overcurrent. It will basically cut the power if you either draw too much current between L and N, which is your life and neutral wire, or if a small current is flowing from the L or N wire to the PE wire, which is your protective earth. If you want to know more details about those three mains voltage wires or how circuit breakers work, then definitely make sure to watch my video about the topic. But anyway, with the circuit breaker in place, we can simply add all the outlets to the output of it in parallel, along with the two circuit switch, which basically turns on the four lamps in groups of two. And in case you're wondering, such a switch looks like this, and is honestly nothing special. Such a plan is called a flow sheet and it can really help you when it comes to making the connections inside the small junction boxes, since those are not explained in the installation plan. There however we can see that the wires normally just need three conductors inside, which are for L, N and PE. Only one time we need a 5 conductor wire, because we not only have to use L, N and PE, but we also have to create two separate switched L phases in order to turn on and off the grouped lamps. Those two plans were basically our theoretical foundation to determine what components and how much wire to order. So here is part of my final order, which was pretty much only extended by a separate order of six LED lamps. And after around one week of waiting, I received all of the components and of course immediately checked whether everything arrived safely, which it did. Now I will talk about each component a bit more while using them during the practical builds. But for starters I wanted to test out the lamps we chose for the occasion. 
So I hooked its power wires up to a mains voltage jack and plugged it in. As you can see, the lamp was rather bright and the color temperature was not half bad, which means it was time to head into the garage. The first thing we did was opening up the old distribution box and removing its fuse, which was only rated for 6 amps. This rating is fitting for the 3 times one5 mm NIM J wire we will be using, since each conductor can handle around 16 amps. By the way, the NIM J kind wire is suitable for indoor wiring without direct sunlight, which was the case for us. So after removing the wires from the output of the fuse, we basically got rid of the old outlets, the old lamp and the old switch along with all the wires. Then we marked where we wanted to mount the new distribution box, drilled the holes, added wall plugs and used screws to secure it to the wall. At this point we used the Yokari to remove the outer insulation of a wire we positioned between the old and new distribution box and afterwards used wire strippers to remove the insulation of each conductor in order to connect them to either the PE clamp or to the L or N inputs of the RCBO. Such a yokari and wire strippers are pretty much crucial when it comes to doing electrical wiring, so do not skimp on them. And when it comes to how much insulation you have to remove from each conductor, then simply follow the rating in millimeter which is printed onto each electrical component. But anyway, after we hooked up the mains voltage wires inside the old distribution box, we reinserted the fuse, checked whether the RCBO functions without a problem, and afterwards wired up an outlet inside the new distribution box so that I could power my softbox to get some decent lighting. Next we measured the length of the lamps and positioned one of them on the ceiling to choose suitable spots for them. After then marking all the mounting holes we drilled them, added the wall plugs and secured the lamp mounting clamps with screws to the ceiling. By the way, since we will be doing lots of hole marking, drilling, inserting of wool plugs and screwing something into them, I will not repeat this process every time. With that being said, we secured the lamps to the ceiling through the help of the just attached clips and continued by connecting two of them temporarily to the distribution box in order to get some better lighting. Next, we marked at a height of 1.1 meter where the outlets and the switch should get positioned and also marked lines from the electrical components right up to the ceiling where the cable conduits should get mounted. I ordered those conduits along with the other components and their job is to basically hold the wires. To attach them to the wall and ceiling, we will be using such clips. And in case you're wondering, those clips need to get positioned 10cm away from the entrance of each component. And in theory you need a new clip every 40cm along the conduit's length. The conduit then needs to end 5cm at the beginning of every component. And according to those guidelines we mark the position of all the clips according to where the wires should get positioned in our installation plan. But before we did this, we obviously had to mount all the outlets, the switch and the junction boxes to the wall. And as soon as all clips were also in place, it was finally time to cut conduits to size with the help of a small saw and secure them to the wall and ceiling through the help of the clips. Once we mounted all of them, it was finally time to push the wires through them and then cut them with a decent excess length included so that we will have no problems with too short wires in a second. Now the wiring for the outlets, switch and lights is pretty straightforward. By simply removing the outer insulation, pushing the wire through the seal, removing the conductor insulation and connecting the conductors to the electrical components like it is intended and then closing everything up. However, for the junction boxes it was a bit more difficult. 
As soon as all the wires were pushed inside it, we connected the fitting conductors to one another according to the flow sheet with the help of Vago splicing connectors. Since the used wire was solid, we can use those kinds. But be careful when working with stranded wires, like the ones of the lamp. There we have to use another kind of Vago connector, which is suited for stranded wires. But anyway, as soon as all the connections were made inside the junction boxes, we pushed the wires tidily in there while leaving enough excess length for possible future modifications and closed the boxes up. By the way, the lid of the junction box tells you how many connectors and what kind of wire is allowed in there. As almost the final step, we wired up the rest of the junction boxes and the lamps in order to finally connect the wires to mains voltage after the circuit breaker inside the distribution box. And after powering everything up, we firstly tested the lights, which as expected worked without any problems, and afterwards used a voltage tester to see whether all the outlets featured mains voltage, which they also did. All that was left to do was to cut holes in the distribution box lid in order to properly secure it in its rightful place. And just like that, the new garage wiring was done. And I hope that you learned a thing or two about proper electrical wiring. If so, don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Stay creative and I will see you next time!